Hey, Reformed Youth Ministries, congratulations on episode 400 of The Local Youth Worker. This is Kyle Hoffsmith. I'm pastor of family ministry at Old North Church in Canfield, Ohio, and co-host of the Center for Parent Youth Understandings podcast, The Word in Youth Ministry. And I just want to say thank you so much for all of the good resources you guys put out. I know as a youth worker, it is sometimes difficult to find biblically informed resources that are helpful for teenagers. And you guys hitting this milestone at 400 episodes of The Local Youth Worker and all of the um, recent publications of the Track Series books have been not only a blessing to me, but have been a blessing to our student ministry at Old North Church. So thank you so much, and may God continue to bless you guys as you continue to educate and train and bless the local church. Hey, I'm here with Katie Schneider and Kurt Cooper. Katie, how's it going? Good. How are you, Dan? Doing well. Kurt, you doing all right? I, I am a copacetic, John. All right. <laughs> um, well, Kurt, I, you know, as you're doing something in your office, I cannot tell what it is, but you're like leaning over. But I see a Crossway Bible on your desk, which is the ESV Bible produced by Crossway. Um, we all have a lot of Crossway books, I'm sure. That's what I was doing, John, is I was looking at my bookshelf because I knew we were going to talk about Crossway books. And I was picking yeah. out some of the ones that I thought uh, we might mention in this conversation. So, All right. Uh, yeah. and including including the, the ESV, which is, you know, the official Bible of the Reformation. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Produ produced by Crossway. And just let, let me say at the outset um, to our listeners, the reason why we're talking about Crossway is because our friends at Crossway have graciously partnered with us uh, to do another promotion, um, a promotional offer. Uh, if you remember, they did that, I cannot remember how long ago it was, but uh, they are going to offer a 40% discount on selected titles. If people go to crossway.org slash RYM40, uh, you will get 40% off selected titles um, as well as free shipping, I think if you spend over a certain amount. Uh, but we're also going to be doing some giveaways. And so they will be giving away an ESV Teen Study Bible, an ESV Study Bible, and then uh, an entire collection of the New Testament Scripture journals, which I think is like a $100 value for just those alone. And so we'll be giving away one of those each week on top of the promotion uh, that will be uh, running for the whole month of May. And so this week, um, I think, is the ESV Study Bible. The Teen Bible will be next week. And people, if they sign up for RYM's newsletter, uh, you can go to rym.org, and you can see how to sign up for our newsletter. Um, you will be entered to win uh, an ESV Study Bible. Uh, so I want to encourage people to do that. Um, and then details for the other giveaways, we will announce those in the ensuing weeks. Um, Katie, do you have any Crossway titles? You're at home right now, and you just are dealing with a newborn. So uh, you're not at your office. Um, I am sure not. I do. I actually just pulled up, as you were talking, I pulled up the, you know, went to crossway.org slash RYM40 and was just kind of perusing the topics or the books that are available. And several of these... Um, Looking specifically, like in the apologetic section, I've used almost well three of those for sure in my ministry. Um, you know, the Surviving Religion 101 we've used for graduation gifts, um, which is just an excellent read um, yeah. for anybody, but especially for um, seniors heading off to college. Um, and then the Rebecca McLaughlin books as well. Um, but I could peruse this whole list, and I I certainly don't have all of them, but. I'm familiar with a good chunk of them and they're been super helpful um, for me personally, but also in ministry. Yeah. And so for people out there listening, I mean, youth workers, by the way, uh, go ahead and buy <laughs> Surviving Religion 101 um, now, even though it's May, uh, but go ahead and get some of those. So for next year, when you have graduates, you can give them those books. I mean, 40% off, very significant. Kurt, I know you've got some titles as well. Yeah, well, she, she already mentioned uh, Surviving Religion 101. I just held it up because, uh, sorry, I mean, did she also mention Re Rebecca McLaughlin? And I have 10, question, 10 questions every teen should ask and answer about Christianity. That is a great book. 
And that that's this, I think that's the teen version of another book called Confronting, Confronting Christian, yeah. which I, I also have on my bookshelf. But um uh I have three books here that I think are uh particularly uh helpful, at least they have been to me. I was doing I don't know, random order, I guess, but The Hole in Our Holiness by Kevin Young, a uh, Kevin V. Young, excuse me. Um, he's like a legend. I shouldn't be saying his name wrong. Uh, but uh but this book, uh, then uh, 12 Ways Your Phone is Changing You by Tony Reinke. Just this might be number one, the book that I get used the most because a lot of our students, when they get into sixth grade, seventh grade, their parents are having the phone conversation about when they're going to get a phone. And, and so this is a great book to hand them that it's great for the parents because lots of times they, they need to um uh, they need to repent and to uh, and to you know take stock of the way the phone has changed them, but also thinking about their child. And then lastly, uh, I actually uh, have barely read this book because I read the other book. I read The Rise and Triumph of the um, Modern Self, but also uh, Strange New World by Carl Truman. Great book to give students. So those are four that I really enjoy from Crossway. Yeah, and I'm fairly certain all of those are on this list. Uh, again, if people go to crossway.org slash RYM40, um, look, something Crossway, uh, I think they're kind of mission vision statement. It says Crossway exists as a not-for-profit Christian ministry to publish gospel-centered, Bible-based content that will honor our Savior and serve His church. Crossway seeks to help people understand the massive implications of the gospel and the truth of God's word for all of life, for all of eternity, and for the glory of God. Uh, so we're very excited uh, that they're partnering with us, reminding everyone this week, you can win a free ESV study Bible if you go to rym.org, sign up for our newsletter uh, to be entered in that. Um, if you've already signed up for RYM's newsletter, uh, just email one of the staff members and tell us, and you can be entered in that, and we'll give that away. And then next week, we'll be giving away an ESV student uh, study Bible. And then the next week, we'll be giving away an entire set of the New Testament Scripture Journal. So once again, a big thank you to crossway.org. And um, always, uh, this content will be in the show notes of the podcast, so you can check out the links there. Ert, welcome back to the podcast. 400 episodes, John. <laughs> 400 and you're still here. It's unbelievable. It is. Yeah, it, it's pretty crazy. Um, so uh, as we're recording this, we really don't know exactly what all we're going to do for the the week of the 400th episode, uh, because this is a few weeks before that. There's some things in motion, some things that may happen, but some of those we, we, we just don't know. So we don't exactly know where all this is going to go, but I did know uh, for episode 300, we had Kurt come back on because Kurt was our very first interview ever. Um, and I do have to say, I, you know what, this is, I'm reminded of this as we're um, just starting recording. You and I had to record two takes on that first because we, yes, okay, this is all coming back my memory. Okay, we, we recorded record the it, first one in Texas. In Texas. In all I am, middle school, Texas. And then you know why we had to re record? Because I believe they were putting out dishes in the background. Yep. And it was so bad that you just said it wasn't usable. So then, yeah, was we, awful. then we recorded at RYM Florida. We re recorded it, and it was during a storm. I went back and listened because mm -hmm. you asked me to. And also, um, and, uh, and yeah, and it was during a storm and some students walk in, I yeah. think episode three, <laughs> some students just walk into the middle of the podcast. That's right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I do. I do remember that, that John, think about how much different our lives are from, you know, August or September of 2017. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. Um, like, <laughs> I have a, my son is turning, my younger son is turning six in three days. And he, it was like 10 weeks or 11 weeks old when we started recording the podcast. Um, no one had played Fortnite 
when we were recording that <laughs> podcast that not that didn't even exist i don't think yet um you know uh <laughs> uh wait a lot has changed yeah uh barack obama was wait when when uh, i'm getting lost no donald trump was the president then no, right no he was wasn't it? not in 2017 yeah he was he got elected in 2016 really? That's right. Okay. Yeah, my bad. It all runs yeah. together, right? Um, yes. They're all the same anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hot take. Let's stop. We're going off the rails already. Yeah. Me. Yeah. He doesn't. What he doesn't want to say, guys, is that it, it it looks like nothing's confirmed yet, but it looks like that John is going to be leaving the RYM podcast realm, and Tucker Carlson is going to host this podcast from now on. <laughs> All right. Or Don Lemon. We just don't know. Um, yeah. Well, Kurt, uh, it's pretty fitting. Our uh, listeners don't know this, but we actually had to just cut real quick to fix some audio stuff. And, you know, we, we had issues with the first episode we ever did. I'm sure we've had issues with other things. And now we're having issues with the 400th. So, you know, that's just kind of keeping things consistent. Yeah. Um, well, I, I will say that, I mean, if you go back and listen to that first episode, the sound quality now is sounds like it's six years or 600 years advanced. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's also say the sound quality we have now isn't the best. Um, but you and I, we just had these little hand. Hello everyone. This is John Parrott and you're listening to the local youth worker, a daily podcast presented by reform youth ministries. And uh, since this is our very first podcast, we thought it would be a good idea to have Reverend Kurt Cooper as our guest. Kurt, Welcome. Glad to be here. Uh, Kurt is the, and I forget the official title, Assistant Pastor to Youth and Families. Is that it? or just? No, I, I think my official title is Minister to Youth, but that's what I do. So, okay. Yeah, that works too. Gotcha. Um, in Montgomery, Alabama, mm-hmm. in Trinity Presbyterian Church. That's right. Um, now, the basic format of the local youth worker focuses on the podcast began. And it's, you know, it's interesting just as... You know, I was assigned to do this uh, by Joey, um, our former executive director, and I did not really want to do podcasting, but he uh, encouraged me to do it. And you just think, okay, what is this podcast going to be? What's it going to be like? What's the format? What's the name? And so even coming up with with some of that, and we knew, yeah, we definitely want to serve youth workers. So let's make it the local youth worker. And then we came up with um, some of those who are listening, who've listened for a while, know what it used to be, but many of you may not know. We used to um, post podcasts Monday through Friday. It was um, five questions we would ask every youth worker, and they would answer those. And Kurt, can you name the five questions that we asked every youth worker? Well, well, before I name the five questions, I do want to say incredibly insightful by Joey and you and everyone involved to just get into. Now everyone has a podcast, yep. right? Uh, and pos- new podcasts are cropping up every day. But just the, I remember when you told me this idea that it just sounded awesome. Uh, and I, I loved it. I love the idea. Uh, I didn't, I, I love the idea of you doing it. I didn't love the idea of me being responsible in any way. But, <laughs> uh, but I want to say that, all right, let's see. The first question is something uh, excellent that you, you've done, something that is, is, is good what's that the, you've what's done. What's the best thing you've done in youth ministry? Yeah, the bet. Well, that's I. I know it's the best, but I think that's, you know, it's tough tough to say, right? Sure. Um, what's the best? But one of the best. Um, and then what's one of the worst things or biggest mistakes that you've made? And then something that encourage has been encouraging uh, to you. And then uh, one of the questions is about a resource, but that might be question five. It is. Yeah. So number four is what have you done to partner with parents? That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yes. Yeah. All right. So yeah. All right. Um, and then, yeah, the, the fifth is, and it's, I'm, I'm kind of forgetting, but it is, you know, what books are you reading? I don't know if it's currently reading or what are some of the, the best you've read, something along those lines, but we would ask those same five questions of every youth worker. And these were, you know, 10 minute episodes or less. Um, that would be, you know, Monday through Friday. And so, you know, we, we aimed at having, you know, short um, little podcasts to fit in people's busy schedules. Uh, 
after we did that for a while, and again, I have not gone back to look. And it's funny how you mentioned um, just the, uh, you know, to look back on starting a podcast back then in 2017. It's funny, I haven't really thought about that of, yeah, in 2017, yes, there were podcasts, but there weren't a ton. And um, that, that's just interesting to kind of think about now and look back on and how popular these have become and how they've just continued to grow. Um, but yeah, at some point, I remember actually at a board meeting, you were there because you're on the board and John Trapp was there. And you guys, to me, were kind of like some of the expert podcasters because you would listen to so many variety of podcasts. And, and one critique you guys gave <clears throat> was that it was hard to go back and search when you heard like a, a kernel of truth in one of the episodes to know, okay, was it the first one or the third one of the week? And so you guys encourage more longer format. And so we switched to that at, at some point. Um, but I can remember that was part of your, your prodding. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I liked uh, longer. Um, I liked the longer episodes. Uh, you know, since I've been listening to podcasts, which is, it's been a long time, you know, the length of the podcast never deterred me if it was something that I was really interested in. Uh, you know, I've, I'm sure people here are familiar with hardcore history. You know, some of those episodes are four and five hours long. And I, you know, I, uh, I, you know, that, that was, that was never an issue for me. Uh, and so it didn't matter to me. Uh, it's actually easier now, the way the podcast is structured now is actually easier for me to listen uh, because uh, I don't I don't need 10 minutes a day. You know, I might need three minutes one day and 30 minutes the next day. So um, or I might have the opportunity, I should mm-hmm. say, to listen. So uh, yeah. it, it really just depends on what's going on. Uh, but I, I, I'm so glad that, uh, you know, <laughs> It's funny to go back and listen. We went back and listened to the first episode um, and to hear Joey introduce it. Um, and you can hear that he did it from like what sounds like his back porch with rain in the background. <laughs> and, you can hear crickets, uh, I think. <laughs> yeah. And uh, to hear Elise um, Hearn. Uh, <laughs> For more resources, visit rymonline.org. The Local Youth Worker is a daily podcast that's centered on five questions each week. Ranging from the practical to the professional, we're looking for answers to the questions you're asking. Whether you're in full-time, part-time, or even volunteer youth ministry, this podcast I don't know how many different people have been that voice. It's usually a female voice, uh, but it explains what the local youth worker is. Uh, yeah. And I, Joe, Joe Deegan is, you know, um, prophetically, he is... He's playing on the very first. I actually, I don't know what the music is now. I, I'm, I'm, it's I can't the same. Play. It is the same. Yeah, it's the okay. same. Yeah. Okay. It's- that's one thing that's been pretty consistent is is Joe's music, and I always want to say that. But it's the not title, the same song. Right? Yeah, it is. It, it is. is. Okay. So okay. the beginning is Joe Deegan's song, "The Wedding Feast," and I want to encourage everyone if you go to Spotify. This is before he was with RYM Worship. Just look for Joe Deegan. It's an awesome song. It it is great and. Um, because, you know, as you're putting this podcast together, it's like, we've got to have music. Well, how are we going to do that? And Joe was just connected with RYM. He was not on staff at the time. And we, um, asked if we could sample his music. And so we just, we used that one because it was, it was upbeat. And so we have put in all things new. Um, that song is, is our transition music. Yes. um, Okay. Yeah, there, there's only, I I knew there was a different, I knew there was a different song between segments. Um, but I, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't place what it is. How, how many different people have explained what the lo- local youth worker is? I know, I think Linda Oliver has. Yeah, and Linda's the, the voice now. Um, I, I don't know how many different ones. And there's times where we've just dropped it out completely. We didn't have that. And, you know, as we you get to 400 did you Did Julia yeah. Friedman ever do it? She did a sample, but uh, it was it was between her and Elise. And 
Even Julia liked Elisa's better, so we went with Elisa's. So somewhere out there, there's a sample with Julia. And, you know, as we're talking about all this, we're probably going to put some snippets of, of these voices and people throughout this episode and maybe even some other episodes just to kind of give some people some samples if you don't want to go do the digging and, and find those. Um, but, you know, it's like you, you get to 400 episodes too and you think, all right, it was initially – you know, five small episodes each week. Then it went to a longer format. Then we went to kind of a variety show um, recently, and we're still kind of doing elements of that. But I just think of, okay, moving forward, you know, will there be changes? And let's go ahead and say this, that, you know, the summer is approaching. And so whenever the summer comes around, it's going to take on, you know, a little bit different format, if not just have some breaks totally because our summers are very busy. But thoughts on changing the format, Kurt? What, what what are your thoughts on just the current format? Likes, dislikes, encouragements to consider something else? What are your thoughts? Well, I just think any variety is good, right? You know, everything, it doesn't matter what it is. Everything becomes stale, right, at some point. Uh, you can only do the same thing over and over again uh, uh, so many times before uh, – you know, and, and oftentimes that variety, you know, the way that's delivered is through the guest because the guests are uh, different. You know, they have different, even if you go back and listen to those early, early episodes where it's five a week, right? Uh, even if you go back and listen to those, the, even though those are structured exactly the same, they're very different because the person being interviewed is different, right? If you don't listen to mine and then you listen to the next guy, the next girl or the next, you know, it, even though a lot of that's going to sound the same, there's going to be a lot of difference because people have different experiences. Uh, I, you know, I would love to see, uh, I, I would, I, I love it when we mix it up just as a listener, when there's something new that does not, now some people I'm sure that bothers, you know, mm-hmm. they're, you know, they want that consistency, but when it's something new, you know, this is re- recently not, you know, not in the last couple episodes, but, in the last, uh, you know, I, I'm trying, I don't know, have the numbers memorized, but just, you know, a couple of times you've just done interviews where it's just, it's almost, I, I'll name check another podcast, but it's Joe Rogan esque, right? Where it's just you and one person. Uh, and it's, uh, it's more long form, if I can say that. Uh, and uh, it's, and maybe it's on one topic. And I've enjoyed that. And then when it mixes up again, uh, you know, there's just a lot of facets to youth ministry. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I think that there's a lot of different ways, uh, to skin a cat, I guess. And, um, <laughs> well, and, and kind of to that point, I mean, again, before this podcast existed, it was a word document with brainstorms with, okay, what could this look like? And then we launch it and it's specifically aimed at youth workers. And we ask those five questions And we knew even with one of those questions, uh, you know, that being, what do you do to to foster your relationships with parents or, you know, to grow those relationships and to minister to parents? And we said youth ministry isn't just ministry to youth, it's ministry to families. Um, But as the, the podcast continued to come out, we just found out more and more parents were listening to this. And so it really, even though we were aiming at youth workers and we wanted to have something to to come alongside them, parents found it interesting. And so that just began to broaden what we, what we did talk about. And again, there's, there's so much just overlap when we're um, talking about issues related to parenting or youth ministry. There's just, there's so much overlap. It just blends together in so many ways. And so in a lot of ways though, that did broaden uh, the, the topics that we would cover, the content that we would get into because there's just, there's so much to talk about culturally and the church, uh, teen issues. I mean, Kurt, in that very first episode, you mentioned uh, just social media growing in popularity. And I mean, obviously TikTok was not around. Be Real wasn't around. Snapchat was in its infancy probably. And just think about that alone of how much is And that's even more important now. Because previously, parents could say, oh, I've been to high school. I know what high school is like. But now, high school is very different. And every generation says that, but that's really true about this generation because of technology. Technology has changed. 
the high school experience and the junior high experience. It's just completely changed it in a, in, um, in a very real way. And, and it, a lot of parents are lost when it comes to that because they just have no experience themselves dealing with it. They are not as good. They're not natives to this technology. They're trying to learn it themselves. And these, their students are natives in this land and they just like, they know how they can speak the language and they're always like 10 steps ahead. The parents, the parents feel lost. I feel like I ought to be teaching my child how to use this, but they know more about it than I do. How can I teach someone um, those things? And so a lot of what we talk about is social media. We talk a lot about technology and phones with parents because that is a, like a real felt need for them. Mm -hmm. And that, that is a, when we yeah people like used that, to just like text and stuff um, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, that's that's what they did and, and now uh everything is uh everything is different <laughs> i say probably more than i <laughs> more than i should <laughs> the internet was a mistake uh, i find myself saying <laughs> that <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah it's it was uh, we we had no idea what was what what was coming uh mm -hmm. and and you know obviously the other thing is is that we had a spinoff podcast for a while which was me and you right mm -hmm. uh and called parenting today and then that kind of parenting today is a podcast produced by reformed youth ministries whether you feel competent or confused in parenting this podcast seeks to apply god's truth to the culture of today for more information on this ministry visit rym.org Hello, everyone, and welcome to Parenting Today. I'm John Parrott, and my co-host is Kurt Cooper. Kurt, good morning. Hey, how's it going, John? Good to be here. Yeah, um, it's been a little while since we've gotten to catch up, but uh, we are into our ninth episode now. Um, we might switch these around a little bit, so this one might not end up being the ninth one, but uh, this is our ninth recording, so it's kind of crazy we've done nine of these now, huh, Kurt? I know it really is. Um, it's crazy that they keep letting us do them. Eventually, I think I just think the plug's going to be pulled. Um, the John, internet I have, will kick I us have out. a question. I have a question to ask you. Okay. If you could work at a fast food restaurant, which fast food restaurant would you work at? But you can't choose Chick Fil A. Uh, Go. I knew you were going to say that. Um, I mean, that's, and it's funny you, you said you can't choose Chick Fil A. You know, as a Christian, we've got to choose. Uh, Christian chicken. Um, no. and, uh, yeah, I, part of it is because I, you're real, off on Sundays, you know? It's yeah, like, the real reason is that you know when your day off is every week, yeah. whereas at other places you don't know where it is. Um, so, But if you had to choose, think about the job. What would you choose? Don't take too long because we have to get into day. You know, I, that was COVID. my fault. That, no, it was, yeah. it was really COVID. I mean, sincerely, we can say but, you and I were – well, I mean, it was like you were starting to homeschool all of a sudden, just like everybody else. And we just realized our schedules were totally different than what they were. And it was just, it was hard to figure out. And so we thought maybe it would come back, but it just didn't. And <clears throat> that was fun, but it became very hard to do both this and that. And so there's a... Do you think that the local youth worker has in any way enveloped parenting today. Like, yeah. cause I think that it has uh, to do, quote, yeah. yeah, to quote <laughs> Dwight Schrute. <laughs> um, yeah. He had a twin, but he absorbed his twin. So he has the power of a uh, <laughs> grown man and an infant. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I absolutely do. Because even while we were doing parenting today, I was thinking, you know, we'd have somebody on. I remember Julie Lowe came on one time and I was thinking, you know what, she could totally be on the local youth worker talking about this. And <clears throat> there were times where even some of our I interviewees would be, would even ask, is this for the local youth worker? Or is this for parenting today? And it was just made us realize more and more, this is really one thing. So let's just kind of keep it that. Um, so, uh, yeah, other other thoughts, Kurt. Anything like when you talked about your, you know, biggest mistakes in youth ministry, any nuance to that now? Um, you've gone back and listened to it. Uh, I did. Yeah, any, any nuance to that? Actually, uh, I stand by it. Um, <laughs> I stand by it. Uh, I stand by it. I, I, was, I was listening. It's weird to listen to yourself have a conversation that you've already had, right? Oh yeah. Uh, uh, welcome yeah. to my world. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I don't know how you do it. Um, but I found myself, uh, you know, 
I was actually, I was expecting to go back and listen to it and think, oh no, what have I, <laughs> what was I doing or, or what did I say? But turns out, I guess, because we got to do it twice, maybe I edited out what needed to be edited out. It, I stand by it. I think most of what's said in there by you and by me, yeah, you know, I think you can, there's something to be gleaned there, uh, some wisdom to be gleaned there, uh, you know, talking about uh, the uh, how to uh, approach your, you know, about your students being smarter than you, but not wiser than you and, mm -hmm. and about n not, you know, not trying to be cool or to do pranks or uh, about having students in your home, uh, you know, all the stuff. And here it is, you know, however many years later uh, it is, we're doing all the same things uh, mm -hmm. that uh, that we were doing then. And I still think pranks are a bad idea. That lesson took, <laughs> oh, uh, that medicine yeah. took. And, uh, you know, and I still, you know, I went, it, it actually, it ages, it aged well. You know, some people, these days people will say someone hasn't aged well, which means that they had an opinion that now you're not allowed to have, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's like someone is from history is canceled because they did this or did that or they thought this or they'll thought that even though that's what everyone thought at the time and how that's so stupid i'm not going to go on a rant about that uh and <laughs> i was I, I well um, i'm stopping it here uh but i i uh but i was worried and I, when i first pulled it up i was like oh man what am i going to say in here that's you know that hasn't aged well or what is john gonna say? i wasn't really worried about you so much about myself <laughs> for obvious reasons but but yeah, uh, it turns out, you know, I think that was a, you know, that was very informative. And I remember listening to other people's uh, mm -hmm. along the way and, uh, and and really getting a lot out of theirs too. So uh, yeah, it was cool. That's yeah. that's all I'll say. It was a great idea by you. Um, I don't well, it, deserve it. It wasn't any solely for that. me, um, without a doubt. And I, I know it's always developed in a you know team setting and kind of I'm certain I bounced questions off of youth workers. Youth workers shared questions before we came up with that final list. But it is funny. I mean, just to kind of piggyback on what you're saying, you know, I started listening to uh, <laughs> these first few episodes just um, yesterday a little bit and today and. Uh, yeah, it's like, I don't even remember what we talked about. And then you get back in and you're thinking, yeah, this was, this was pretty good advice and counsel. And I remember so much of the podcast was just trying to capture the conversations you have with youth workers at our summer conferences, at our youth leader training. Um, I would remember just coming back from those conferences and always appreciating the time that you sit down with another youth worker and you bounce ideas off of each other. And so that's what that was. And um, we got to hear from youth workers yeah, in a variety of contexts, share what what works and what doesn't, and so yeah, it's it's interesting that's still out there and that can be used. And like I said, we might have some clips played throughout this, but encouraging people, hey, go back and check some of those out if that's helpful, and just you know ignore the audio um, for sure. Um, Kurt, I know again as we're recording this, there's still stuff in the works for some episodes ahead. I do know at the time of this recording, we do have a, a pretty big guest that's coming on. The schedule would not line up to where it was exactly at our 400th, um, but somebody big will be coming on if we want to say that. Um, but uh, excited about that that interview. And you mean we'll... you mean well known? You don't mean big like Job of the Hut. You mean like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, somebody well known. That's a, a better, okay. better phrase. To yeah. uh, you know, uh, um, R.I.P. Andre the Giant. But that's not who's coming, right? Oh, oh. Sad, very sad. I know. Great. Uh, you know. Yeah. The uh, did you like Pride. wrestling? Did you like no, wrestling? I, when did, you were I did not. I just never got into it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That we, we were in high school. That was so popular. But I mean, Andre the Giant had already passed by then. But anyway. Yeah. All right. Yep. So somebody well known will be coming on uh, to help out with this 400th. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, we have some other people that are coming on for some other things too. So we might kind of stretch this out just because we, we knew when the 300th episode came out, we did, if I'm remembering correctly, break that into three parts. Um, so there's, I guess, a sense in which this really isn't, isn't the 400th episode because that 300th was three parts. So it depends on how you want to count those. Um, and we've done reruns as well. So if you like look at the podcast, it actually has more than 400. Um, but, uh, anyway, 
um, yeah, just letting our listeners know kind of behind the scenes as we do sometimes. These aren't planned out yet, so we just kind of don't know what shape this will take. But I did think it'd be interesting, once again, just kind of tradition, get Kurt back on, reminisce about the first episode and to have him back on. But Kurt, look, let's draw this to a close, and you're actually going to be back next week as part of the 400th uh, for some other discussion. So see you next week, Kurt. All right. Thanks, John. Glad to be here. Coming by without money. Oh, come and feast without